Welcome back at the Technical Forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries here at the Hanover Fairground. At this moment, I would also like to say hello to all our welcome, uh, our online guests. We are live streaming from the fair. I invite you all to come and have a seat, or have a coffee or a tea. There's a lovely lady walking around serving you with complimentary drinks. Um, our next topic um, will regard the catalytic reforming for fuel cells using metal foam substrates. And for that, we'll hear a representative of Novorox from the United States, our partner country of the fair this year. So please welcome with me on stage, technical director of Novorox, Dr. Philip Hutton. Big hands, please. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Dr. Philip Hutton. I'm technical director of Novorox Technologies. Uh, today I have the privilege of giving a presentation on catalytic reforming for fuel cells using metal foam substrates. We are excited about using metal foam substrates. Uh, it's a relatively new, uh, within the last 20 years or so, relatively new uh, substrate and we hope to be one of the few companies that uh, are on the cutting edge of depositing different types of catalysts on those substrates. Um, before I go forward with the metal foam substrates, let me tell you a little bit about Novorox Technologies. Novorox Technologies is a New York-based company. We are located in Rochester, New York. Uh, we were founded in 2013 as a joint venture between Solid, Solid Cell and Unicat. Solid Cell is a solid oxide fuel cell company with more than 10 years experience working in solid oxide fuel cells. Uh, Unicat is the commercialization arm of the Bereskov Institute of Cat Catalysis. The Bereskov Institute of Catalysis has more than 2,500 scientists, engineers, and technicians devoted almost exclusively to catalysis. Uh, as an entity that is, a, that is owned by Unicat, we have access and we draw from the talent of both the Bereskov Institute of Catalysis and Solid Cell. Uh, what we do is we develop and fabricate catalysts, whatever your needs, whatever fuel you're trying to convert to a different fuel, uh, we find the catalyst that makes that happen and we fabricate the catalyst on the substrate that's best suited for that. We also design the reactor if that's what you want to. Uh, we engineer that, manufacture that, and we also design and test uh, power systems. This is a, uh, these are pictures of some of the uh, projects we're working on. In the upper left hand corner you'll see a reforming set. This is a partial oxidation reforming set. It's a laboratory set. We provide the reactor, the catalyst, the thermocouples, the seals. And uh, if you're a laboratory manager and you don't want to fabricate that yourselves, we'll fabricate that for you and sell that to you. We also have a, another um, stock uh, steam reforming test set uh, that you can see at our booth in D number 37. Uh, we also fabricate ceramic catalysts. We'll fabricate catalysts on foil, solid, and porous wafer. And, uh, and the objective of this talk is our metal foam catalyst. We're very excited about that. We do want to uh, be the go-to company to develop catalysts on metal foams if that's what you feel is good for your needs. Uh, another system that we're working on right now are pilot scale power systems. We hope to do a demonstration in the Bakken oil fields converting flare gas to natural gas at the well site. We hope to get that demonstration completed by the end of this year. Um, so what is a metallic foam? Uh, essentially it's exactly what it sounds like. Okay, a more um, technical definition of a metallic foam. It's a highly porous structure with interconnecting lattice, uh, consisting of a complex uh, porous, por complex interconnect porosity, uh, where the shape and size of the pores are undefined. They're random in nature. And you can, just as an example, we have here several different types of porotic uh, foams. This is one that we use to, uh, we'll coat catalysts on this and we'll uh, either stack a bunch of these and put them in a the reactor. Um, or we will actually, this one we've used, this is a, a mesh 
surrounding a metallic foam and we use this as a catalytic combustor. As you can see, it's dirty, which means that we've used it in the past. And uh, we typically use this to demonstrate uh, catalytic combustion with no flame by cooking hot dogs at conferences. Uh, we won't be cooking hot dogs at this conference, though. So. <laughs> Again, some of the properties of metallic foams. Um, typically, uh, a metallic foam it has high strength and high stiffness. Uh, this allows the foam to maintain its shape and structure throughout the temperature range up to 900 degrees Celsius, depending on the type of foam you're using. Uh, we, can make we can coat foams that are made from fecroloy, which are, which are high temperature metals that can withstand temperatures up to 1,000 degrees. Uh, but typically we use either nickel metallic foam or stainless steel metallic foams. Um, there is limited plastic deformation. What this means is that uh, we can take the foam and if we want to maintain very close tolerances between the catalyst and the reactor vessel, we can si oversize the foam just slightly and uh, fit it into the reactor vessel so that uh, there's no slippage of gases through the, through the sides. And also, if we're worried about heat transfer, we want to maintain as uh, tight uh, contact as possible. And that's an advantage of uh, uh, metallic foams that you won't see in ceramics or uh, ceramic beads. Um, high specific surface area. As you can see from this, um, gases flowing through have a lot of surface area to contact and react. Uh, what this does is this increases uh, the activity for a given volume uh, for whatever reaction you're looking at compared to a typical bead catalyst. Some thermal properties. Um, if you're using a metallic foam, it has very high thermal conductivity relative to ceramic. Any reaction that occurs on catalysts is going to be either exothermic or endothermic. Exothermic meaning that it releases heat, endothermic meaning that it absorbs heat. What happens is when the, when the reactants react, uh, they'll either cool down, they'll, they'll create a cool spot in the middle of the uh, catalyst or they'll create a hot spot in the middle of the catalyst. Uh, the higher thermal conductivity will transport heat away from the reaction zone if it's an exothermic reaction or transfer heat to the, ex to the reaction area if it's an endothermic reaction. What you want to do is maintain that temperature as uniformly as possible. Um, thermal shock tolerance. This is, this is another characteristic of, of foam that is advantageous compared to ceramics. Um, with the metallic foam, you can, you can heat up the foam or cool it down almost as fast as you want to. Uh, a lot of catalysts require you to uh, heat, up, heat up the catalyst or cool down the catalyst uh, over a period of time to uh, prevent the catalyst from cracking. Uh, with a metal foam, you have very high shock tolerance and you can, it maintains its shape after repeated thermal cycles. And thermal expansion. We can get metallic foams in stainless steel, copper, aluminum, uh, fecroloy, which is very high temperature metal, uh, nickel, or even a combination thereof. So we can get uh, nickel coated on, on metal. Uh, so we can actually match the thermal expansion of the foam with the reactor vessel. So as the reactor vessel heats up, it will expand. And if you want to maintain good contact, you can match that thermal expansion with your metallic foam, and we can match it with the catalyst material. So if you have problems with your catalyst material uh, flaking off, uh, we can try to match the thermal expansions and see if we can maintain that catalyst material on that substrate. Flow and reaction characteristics. As you can see, a typical metallic foam has high tortuosity. What this means is a, uh, I think the, 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 the definition is tortuous path. Okay, so this means that there's, there's not a well-defined path. This promotes mixing and diffusion of reactants to the catalytic area. Um, it produces turbulent flow as opposed to laminar flow, and that's good for heat transfer. Uh, so it reduces hot spots for, or cold spots, depending on whether your reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Uh, variable pore size. You can vary the pore size. One of the... Uh, characteristics you want with the catalyst and with any reactor, depending on how your system is designed, is to control the pressure drop across that reactor. Uh, if your pressure drop uh, requirements are very tight, you can vary the pore size 
uh, to reach the pressure drop you want. There is a trade-off in specific surface area, uh, but you do have that flexibility. Uh, just to give you an idea of how a catalyst would work for reforming, uh, what we're seeing here is basically um, several, several catalysts stacked on top of each other. We would put this in a reactor and we would put this in a reactor with the reactor vessel on the outside. Heat would flow from the outside in towards the middle of the reaction zone. Uh, the reactants would come through the actual foam and react and because you have good heat flow you have uh, greater activity, uh, greater reactivity between the uh, reactants. Uh, in a catalytic combustor, similar to this, what this is it is a uh, cylindrical metal foam that has an aperture in the middle and it's surrounded by a, a mesh. And we, we flow propane through the middle. The propane diffuses out and oxygen diffuses in. And they meet on the catalytic surface and the oxygen combusts the propane without a flame. Uh, once you get this up to temperature around 350 degrees, uh, as long as you're flowing propane in there, it maintains its temperature and it oxidizes all, or combusts all the propane uh, without a flame. Okay. And since it's a low temperature combustion, uh, you have much better uh, emissions profile. No NOx, uh, no NOx coming out of it. And uh, it's a quick presentation. Uh, but I want to thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll answer them here as best I can. Or you can talk to me at our booth. We're right behind this booth here at D37. Uh, we'd be happy to talk to you if you have any inquiries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hutchin, also from my side. Are there any questions from the audience at this time? You can raise your hands and I'll come to you. I see. Everyone is still shy, but it is absolutely no problem. You can take all your questions to the booth of Novorox. As mentioned before, it is right across the technical forum. And once again, thank you, Dr. Hutton, for this wonderful thank presentation. Thank Big you hands, again. please. <laughs> thank you. Next presentation will start shortly, and we will hear a reference from the Frauenhof.